prevent the ball from going toward the goal. Evans has got to put it up. The three-point shot shooter, yes, for the NCAA Division II title. The senior from Circleville brings a 36-0 championship to Finley. Um, yeah, after I won the national championship, I um. Out of out of a bunch of mixed emotions, I was obviously excited and and proud of the moment. But um, looking back on my college experience, um, it brings up my dad who passed away at that time a lot. And holding up that trophy, I remember we got on the ladders and cut the cut the nets down and everything. And when I got up top and you know took my cut of the net, I looked up and kind of blew a kiss up to the ceiling and kind of said, "This one was for you, Dad." Because throughout college. Um, my dad throughout high school as well in my childhood he was always that that backbone there for me and that person i called and that was always there when i needed to give me support or whatever it was and um he made a promise to me before he died that he would watch me play basketball again and and um it's kind of ironic that he got to see me play again and then he ended up going into a coma the next day so winning the national championship it i know he was proud because i know he was looking down and he was our sixth man of that game so there was a lot of mixed emotions. I had my family there, my teammates, we were all excited. Um, it was definitely a moment I won't forget. And the doctor told my dad that he had four to six weeks to live and it's just something that I, I think a 20 year old kid or, or you know anybody honestly has a hard time to process when they say, you know, your father has, has a month to live. And because of that, I kind of just like stopped going to school. The doctor had given him four to six weeks to live and he made me a promise that he would watch me play basketball one more time. And you know me, I'm just kind of like, okay, dad, yeah. Like <clears throat> the doctor kind of gave us some facts that don't support that. Um, we were about to play the biggest game on our schedule, Ohio State University, and it was the first game of our season. And, um, you know, my dad's still alive and kicking it somehow. He's in a wheelchair. He couldn't talk at that time. He, like, you could just kind of see he wasn't the man he used to be, but he was still there. And I had one of the best games I've had in my career, at least up until that time. Had a big night against Ohio State. We upset them. We beat them by two points, I believe. It was just a, one of those like <clears throat> edge of your seat games. And after the game, he kind of gave me a big hug. And I was kind of amidst all the all the excitement with my teammates and everything going on. And he kind of said that he was like, "I love you. I'm proud of you." And he was like, "I know you're gonna be okay." And and the next day, you know, he had a heart attack and slipped into a coma. And he ended up passing a few days after that. And that's kind of like, that was um, a defining moment in my life, I think, because he told me, he made a promise to me that he would watch me play basketball a game. And, that, and the doctor said he had four to six weeks to live and he stayed alive six and a half months longer than that. And it just shows you that if you put your mind to something that anything's truly possible because he put his mind to something and he went through tremendous amount of physical pain. Um, and it just blows my mind that after all that time, all the, all the pain and tears and chemo and radiation that he really, the next day kind of, kind of left us right after he kept his promise and gave me that last hug and looked me in my eyes and kind of said, you're gonna be okay. My agent suggested that um, I come up to Canada for this combine. He didn't know much about it. I knew nothing about it. Um, something called the NBLC, the National Basketball League of Canada. And um, I kind of came up here just to, just on a long shot, just to see um, what it was and if I can get a little exposure or recognition somehow. And I came up here, I, I, I had no intention of getting drafted. Um, to be honest, I didn't even know there was a draft.
Um, at that, that moment right there, I think it was just shock. I was kind of in disbelief for a moment. I wasn't even all the way focused in on the commissioner at that time. I was talking with my friend and we were just kind of joking about the weekend and whatnot. And I kind of just in the background heard the University of Finley and I kind of, that caught my attention and I, I looked at the front and I saw Morgan Lewis from the University of Finley as the first overall pick. And you know, I'm walking to the front stage, I'm shaking the commissioner's hand. It all felt like a little dream at the moment because um, everything was so fast paced. It was followed by interviews and, and, and newspapers wanted some quotes and stuff because the league was new at the time. So there was a lot of publicity and a lot of hype behind it. But that accomplishment of being the number one draft um, is something I was very proud of and it was very a memorable moment but it was like a short-lived victory I think just because training camp started a few weeks after that and when when you're the number one draft pick it sounds all good and looks good on paper but at, at the end of the day it's kind of a target on your forehead and, and when you're going into training camp and into the preseason games and playing against these teams you know everybody's coming at you they want to know what what you can do that they can't do or why these coaches saw something in you that they didn't see in them so it's one of those like no nights off, no plays off, because if you take that that one play off, somebody's right there at your neck, like waiting for you to slip up. So it, it was something that I, I really appreciate, but it was humbling more than anything, because you know the more successful or the higher up you get in this world, I feel like the more you got to work and prove yourself and, and do that consistently. And I think the NBL draft helped uh, prove that to me. felt good it's just it just goes back to to all those hours in the gym all those long bus rides and long flights and late nights and early mornings you know when you're doing that stuff it it's difficult sometimes and not that we hate doing it but you know it's hard going to practice every day and just pushing our body to the limits every day to try to get a little better but when you can accomplish something like winning a, a championship at the pro level it, it kind of just puts it all into perspective and makes it all worth it. Um, I love this game. I love working to be a better player. And that, that's kind of the ultimate level of, of success is winning championships, no matter what league you're in. Like everybody loves a winner and winners are respected. And um, that's all the NBL championship is to me. You know, it's, it's respect for me. Um, I was an all-star in the league and it shows I, I can play individually, but at the same time, I, I've, I've won a championship in this league. So um, the league isn't the biggest league in the world. And, and but, you know, to us here in Canada, it, it's kind of a little bit of a bragging right or we respect it. And, and it, it it's where we live and where we play at. So, I, of course, I want to have a championship here. My first summer living downtown, um, nobody knew me. A couple, I mean, I had a little bit of notoriety in the NBL, but as far as the Toronto basketball scene, um, I mean, not, not too many people knew who I was. And the OVO tournament really um, helped me create my own lane, you know. Um, I was playing in the Pro-Am, and I remember Banana, he was at one of the games, and he was just rapping to me after the game a little bit, like, where are you from? Who are you? Blah, blah, blah. And, um, you know, we exchanged info a little bit. He checked on me here and there, and then he came to another game. And um, after a few more conversations, he asked me if I wanted to play in the OVO tournament. And then the next day, I remember I couldn't believe it, and uh, Nico was calling me. Nico gave me a call and just said he heard that I can play a little bit and that they have this little this little tournament this weekend. They're going to uh, bring me to to see how I am. And if all works out, then they were going to have me play in the OVO tournament. And I went to the tournament and all, all worked out well. Um, and honestly, that, that's probably the best tournament I've ever played in the OVO tournament. Just the, the hype, the atmosphere, um, the people in attendance, you know, there's celebrities, there's there there's sports stars, there's there's all type of different people and um it's really the scene to be at the end of July is downtown Toronto. Everybody got some problems The only way to solve this together Then 
like I'm home.